Hey everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures over the past year, you'll typically find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we traveled through various countries around the world, we've noticed that some things are a little bit different than what we're accustomed to back home in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this channel at all is to share our experiences in the hopes of inspiring you to travel more. With that, then we have amassed some tips and tricks for each of the countries that we have visited so that if you wish to go to the same countries and you're mapping out your itineraries, you are armed to the teeth with some useful information about the countries that you wish to visit. Today's video is going to focus on traveling through Colombia. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that we visited Cartagena and Medellin while we were there. While some of these tips and tricks will be about those cities specifically, many of the pointers are going to be about the country as a whole. We hope that you find these useful. So the first pointer that we have is with regards to something that you need to do before you fly, and that is to fill out a passenger form. This is something that you can do online, and typically the airline that is going to take you into Colombia will prompt you to do this. If not, then do go out of your way to make sure that you have one filled out, because you will inevitably need to show the form once you come through customs. So if you don't want to have any problems getting through immigration, then make sure that you have this passenger form filled out. You won't get a QR code, but you can either just keep it on your phone as a PDF, or you can print it out to present. Once you've arrived to Cartagena or Medellin airports, you're going to need to get into the city center. And the best way to do that is by taking a ride share. There doesn't seem to be any public transportation, or at least none that the locals or our hosts have suggested for tourists to take. As far as ride shares go, you can either take Uber or InDrive, and they both seem to be cheaper than taking a local taxi. Uber is kind of the middle ground in terms of price, and InDrive seems to be the most affordable ride share app to use. If you don't know what InDrive is, we explained it in our tips and tricks for Panama video, so go and check that out. But the short story is that it's very similar to Uber, except for there's a bit of a negotiation process. Don't worry, it's not like you have to chat to someone verbally, nor do you have to even type something out. You basically get prompted or suggested an offer price and you accept that. And then the drivers can either accept your offer or they can come back to you with a numerical offer and you can choose which one to accept but both have proven to be safe and reliable. In terms of payment options, obviously with Uber, you can just upload your credit card to the app, whereas InDrive, you do need to pay in cash. And keep in mind that with InDrive, if there are any tolls, that is not included in the price, whereas with Uber, it would be included in the price. But overall, we would recommend using either Uber or InDrive. They have both proved to be safe, reliable, and affordable. As a further point to that, then getting to and from the airports is relatively inexpensive when it comes to Cartagena, as fares typically coming from the airport into the city cost no more than about 18,000 Colombian pesos. However, while we wish we could say the same thing for Medellin, that is definitely not the case. And the reason for this is because it is a pretty long journey. It goes at least an hour. It can be longer if you don't go through one of the major toll roads, which is definitely the quickest route to get you into the city. If you do choose to do that, then obviously that will end up being included in the price of what you pay. And that price, generally speaking, can be anything between 80,000 to 120,000 pesos per ride. So definitely do factor that in to your budget if you are planning on coming to the amazing city of Medellin. In terms of currency, they use the Colombian pesos. They do not use any other currency such as US dollar. So make sure that you do have Colombian pesos when you visit Colombia. You will need cash for most places that you go in Colombia. Big supermarkets, as well as convenience stores and tour operators are likely to take credit card. However, a lot of smaller accommodations, restaurants, cafes, bars, pubs, walking tours will require you to have cash. 
So just make sure that you have an ATM card, preferably one with no foreign transaction fees. So you can just go to one of the banks there and withdraw money. In terms of withdrawing money from the ATMs there, we actually did find that the Colombian banks themselves had a pretty hefty foreign transaction fee, even if your ATM card doesn't have one at all. So try to take out a large sum of cash once so that you don't get charged to withdraw your own money multiple times. Next up, we want to talk about drinking water because that's always something we find important to know about each of the countries we visit. When it comes to Medellin, the water is definitely potable. When we checked into our Airbnb, we were told that that was the case for the entire city, so you don't have to worry about that. However, the same cannot necessarily be said of Cartagena. We were told to be cautious about it and only use it for like washing our toothbrushes and things like that. And for everything else, we were told bottled water is the way forward if you're not planning on boiling it. However, generally speaking, the best practice in Cartagena, irrespective, is just to check with your accommodation as to the quality of the tap water before using them in any way. There is good news on the food front. Food in Colombia is very cheap and affordable, whether that be groceries or eating out. If you're eating out, of course, you can go to the more touristy restaurants and cafes and pubs, which would be more expensive. However, if you want something that is cheap and delicious, then try to find a place where the locals eat. Typically, that would be a restaurant advertising a menu del dia, which could be a set breakfast or lunch, and that will definitely give you the maximum value for your money. Typically, a menu del dia for lunch specifically would include a starter as well as a main and some kind of refreshing drink. And usually we wouldn't pay any more than $5 per person. And trust us when we say this is the best food. So we really encourage you to try and eat somewhere local and cheap because you just have the most incredible cultural experience while saving coins. In terms of the sorts of things that you should be eating outside of the menus del dia, then you are really spoiled for choice because Colombian cuisine is epic. Since Cartagena is a seaside city, then of course the seafood that you're going to be able to get there is second to none. So definitely look out for seafood dishes in particular while you are there. As for Medellin, they have a speciality dish called Bandeja Paisa, which is just a smorgasbord of some of the best food that you are ever going to try. And when you combine it all onto the same plate, it is an explosion of flavor that you should not miss. Across the whole of Colombia, though, then there are a number of staples that you really should try. And we are talking about the likes of Pandabono, Ojaldres, Arepas, empanadas, buñuelos, and a number of other things. If there's anything that looks to be something that the locals are enjoying, then we implore you to go and enjoy it with them. You will not regret it. Cartagena is a very walkable city, so we highly doubt that you will have a need for a cab or a ride share unless mobility is an issue. And in terms of walkability, we're talking about the old historic downtown core, as well as Gethsemane. You can easily walk between the two as well. We wish we could say the same thing about Medellin, but the truth is it is a sprawling metropolis and it is very difficult to cover the entirety of the ground without using some alternative means of transport than just walking. Aside from ride shares though, then we are very happy to say that there is a very good metro system in Medellin, which can basically take you to within 20 minutes of wherever you need to go within the city. However, in order to ride it, then you do need to get a transport card that will cost you 10,000 pesos. The good news though is that you can actually use one card for multiple people, so you don't necessarily have to buy one card per person and you can save some money on that. But then basically you load the appropriate amount of money for the appropriate amount of trips that you want to be taking. Each trip in our experience was 3,210 pesos. And so literally you just take your card, you tap on, you take your journey, you then tap off at the end 
and then you are exactly where you need to be. Otherwise, it's comfortable, it's spacious, it's also air conditioned, which is perfect for those very warm days. And so if you're wanting to get around, then that is probably the most cost effective option beyond just walking. Another thing that you do need to bear in mind though is that the ticket offices only accept cash to load your card. So this is yet another reason why it is a good idea to carry cash on you at all times in Colombia. Another common consideration that you hear about when you mention you're going to Colombia is about safety. And to be honest with you, we heard more about safety from the locals themselves than other tourists. They were really trying to look out for us. And they have a saying there that is, don't give away the papaya. And what they mean by that is don't make anything obvious. So don't carry your phone in your back pocket. One of the things all of the locals do is tuck their phones into the front of the waistband of the pants or bottoms that they're wearing. Basically, don't keep any valuables in open pockets. Don't have a bag that cannot be securely closed. And if you do need to use your phone while you're out walking, then just keep a tight grip on it. I think it's a good idea when you're traveling in any foreign country and mind you, even walking around Toronto late at night to just be sensible. If you've heard from one of the locals that an area isn't that great, then maybe just don't go walking around after dinner and stick to pretty public places where there's plenty of light and lots of other people. We felt very safe the entire time we were there. So basically just keep your wits about you and you'll be totally fine. Another consideration with regards to safety that we heard about before we even came to Colombia, and this is something we did actually end up really taking on board, is that overland travel may be a tad on the risky side. So as a result, if you have seen our videos, then you'll see that we actually flew from Cartagena to Medellin. Not only is it a quick journey, but it's also a pretty cheap journey. And the reason for this is because actually in Colombia, there are a number of low cost carriers that can make traveling around the country that bit more cost effective so that you can have that added peace of mind. I believe that actually for us to get between Cartagena and Medellin, it only cost us $80 Canadian to do that one way. So I would imagine that it will be around the same kind of cost, if not a little bit cheaper to get between each of the major cities that you want to visit while you are planning your itinerary through Colombia. While the major cities in Colombia are generally safe, we did hear a few stories about travel within smaller cities having to be rearranged last minute due to cartel activity, which I think is something that is ever changing and never stagnant. So sometimes you cannot prepare ahead for something like that. It's just best to really keep your ear to the ground to make sure that you're on top of the most current news so that you can make your travel arrangements or make adjustments while you're there as necessary. For the most part, travel in the big cities of Bogota, Medellin, Cali, Cartagena, and Barranquilla should not be an issue, but just keep your travel plans flexible for any of the smaller cities. Honestly, though, we kind of struggle to figure out additional tips and tricks to give you all because really getting around Colombia and the day to day and the pace of life and everything is very akin to what we've experienced in Europe and North America. We felt very, very comfortable as soon as we landed and everything kind of just made sense to us with our particular sensibilities. So really, other than the pointers that we've already given you, then it should be more or less the same kind of experience as you would anticipate when you're going through those other parts of the world. And honestly, we loved it. We hope that you will too. And that's our full list of tips and tricks for traveling around Colombia. We hope that the pointers we've given you have been helpful and that you can apply them to your future travels. That all being said, we recognize that this is not an exhaustive list. So if you have any further questions or you have any additional tips and tricks, then please leave us a comment below. Until next time, though, take care. And keep smiling.